Hi everyone, and welcome to Efficient Gaming. First off, I'd just like to apologize for not getting a video out over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the first week I was actually trying to get up high enough level in Witcher Monster Slayer to release the video because I wanted to be level 30 before I did the skill point assignment video. And in general, I've just been busy and haven't had the time to either level up or do the video. Um, but that's the entire point of Efficient Gaming. This channel is dedicated to those who don't necessarily have all the time in the world to play, but want to get the most out of their gameplay, so to play efficiently, hence efficient gaming. So again, I apologize, I'm not going anywhere, I plan on continuing to make content for both The Witcher Monster Slayer and other games that are, will be coming in the future. I have also been spending a little bit of time on another project that I'll be releasing hopefully soon, um, where myself and my partner play games together, and hopefully that's a bit of fun as well. So there's a couple of things I want to look at today. Obviously we're going to do the skill point assignment video and also we're going to have a quick look at the announcement which just came out for WitcherCon. So let's have a quick look at that. Okay, so recently what we got some pretty exciting news. There's going to be a online global WitcherCon event. So this is going to be running through a lot of new content and sort of behind the scenes things for some of the series and games that have already been out. Uh, so we'll just read through the announcements. WitcherCon is a global virtual celebration of The Witcher. This digital convention will be streamed on both Netflix and CG Project Red's YouTube and Twitch channels and will be available for co-streaming. Now I've thought about doing something for this but I'm not really into the streaming yet. Uh, I might be in the future, but for the moment I'll just be watching this in my own time and I'll give you some comments after I've watched it. Watch the worlds of CD Projekt Red's The Witcher video games and The Witcher Netflix series come together for an event full of surprises and exclusive first looks. Get ready for deep dives into the making of The Witcher games, live action series, anime film and merchandise, including exclusive behind the scenes footage, interactive panels spotlighting the people who brought The Witcher to life in game and on screen, I'll be actually quite interested to see if they do feature Monster Slayer for this, so that's something to watch for. Featuring breaking news from the Netflix series and never before seen reveals from across the Witcher franchise. The reveals could potentially have something to do with the Witcher Monster Slayer, but I'm not holding my breath for things like that yet, and you'll see why in a minute. Expert explorations into the lore, legends, monsters, and origins of the continent. Now this is something I'm really interested in. Um, if you saw one of my previous videos, we actually did a little bit of research into Belatin, uh, one of the Witcher in-game uh, holidays per se, which is very much closely linked to the May Day celebrations that we have around the world. So I'm quite keen to see what happens with that. Um, in case you're wondering, no new Witcher game will be announced at WitcherCon, but there are still lots of reasons to tune in. Look out for the full schedule reveal coming soon. If they've got any more details by the time I make my next video, I will have a quick look into that and give you any updates. But in general, I'm not necessarily expecting them to either release the Witcher Monster Slayer for the July 9 or July 10 WitcherCon, and... While they're saying no new Witcher game will be announced, technically Monster Slayer has already been announced. The most we can hope for then, I think, is a release date will be announced at WitcherCon, but I'm still not even sure if they're going to do that. We'll just have to wait and find out. So WitcherCon is obviously coming up. It starts in about 19 days from when I'm recording this video, but I should get the video out today, so it should still be about 19 days. Again, we'll cover what happens when we once I've watched it and hopefully we get a bunch more info. It's going to be streamed over two days. I'll be watching both. Hope you guys do too. So yeah, that's something exciting to look forward to. Okay, so let's move on to the next part, which is going to be our in-depth look into skill point assignment. Now, another one of the reasons why getting this video out took so long is because creating infographics like this is quite difficult. Even though a lot of the content is just copied straight out of screenshots from the game, like obviously the skill trees, they don't actually fit on your phone all at once, so you've got to paste them together, and none of the information is displayed on them, you have to click into each one, so I went and created this, which hopefully will help everyone pick their skills going forward. 
So I've done this one and I've also done this annotated version which is the one I'm going to be going through because it has my recommendations for which order we're going to skill up in. So if we have a quick look in here and zoom in, I'm just going to zoom out so that it fits on the page. Yeah, that'll have to do. Right, so at the top, these are our passives. These are really, I wouldn't include them as skills because these are the basic things that you need to do to be able to play the game. And you get them at level one. So I've just called them passive. So this one enables fast attacks. This one enables strong attacks. This one enables parrying, which is your defense. This one enables the creation of oils, enables the creation of witcher potions, enables the creation of bombs. This one attracts a random monster. Now, this one didn't used to exist. This is something new as per one of the most recent updates. It doesn't give any information on how often it attracts a random monster, but often when I open the game now I will find that there are more monsters spawned at my home location than there usually are, which I'm assuming is down to this skill. And the last one out of our passives is enables casting of Igni the fire spell which is just something that again you start the game with and you can do it teaches you as part of the tutorial for that. Now as you'll see what I've done is I've highlighted all the skills that we can actually skill up um, in red, orange and yellow so the red ones being top priority the orange ones being medium priority and the yellow ones being low priority. You will have to do some of the low priority ones before you do the top priority ones just because the way the skill trees are assigned and because you can only get to new skills that are top priority, in my opinion, after you've unlocked some of the low priority ones. But in general, if you look at each level requirement here and the colors that I've done, um, it'll give you an idea of in my opinion, again, you can skill your character up however you want, and there are a lot of different ways of playing. This is how I feel that it would benefit you or me most from skilling points up in this way. So obviously you get all your passives at level 1. Level 2 you get by completing the tutorial, so these are all the skills that you can start to increase once you've finished the tutorial, which you do before you actually start walking about and killing any monsters. In this category I've got the top priority ones as the 4% damage per level fast attack, you can skill this up five times, and the 4% damage per level for the strong attack which you can also skill up five times. So personally I would put my first 10 skill points into here. You get skill points by leveling up and by filling out your bestiary you get one point every time you have defeated enough monsters. This will be your main source of skill points most of the way throughout the game because obviously up to level 30 you'll only be getting 30 skill points whereas you'll be getting a lot more skill points. I think by the time I got to level 30 I had over 121 skill points so most of them you're going to get out of the bestiary. From level 2 to level 10 we're going to skill up these points first then we look at the orange ones um, specifically in terms of what I would do next, this oil effectiveness one, because you will be using more oils at lower levels to be able to defeat certain monsters, then I would probably go with the chance of the extra fire damage, because this is the only spell that you know at the moment, so it is worthwhile having that to deal some extra fire damage. Now it's only a chance of extra fire damage, so at max level it's 25% extra chance of extra fire damage every time you cast the spell, which is a quarter of the time, so that's pretty decent. The next one I would look at skilling up is the critical hit meter. Uh, you have less reduction when you get hit. It's useful, but obviously if you try not to get hit anyway, this is not that useful. And this one that I've put as low priority here is unlocks a new potion tawny out. Now the potion itself is decent but there are a lot better potions for defeating monsters and fighting nematons than the tawny owl. Tawny owl I believe gives you 30% cooldown reduction on casting signs. While I have highlighted these and these are all within the level 2 to 10, it's entirely possible that you will get to level 10 and you have not filled up every single one of these skill points, which is why I haven't put exact point allocations on each of these. You might get to level 10 before you've got many of these skill points, um, or you might get these ones and this one and this one filled in, and then you might decide you want to save the rest of your skill points for when you get to level 10. It all depends on how you play the game, 
where your experience comes from and how many skill points you end up with. In general, I found that after about level 10, I had more than enough skill points to fill in level 10 before I started moving on to the level 15 skills. But you can save skill points and put them in level 15 for as soon as you hit level 15, you can max these skills that are more beneficial than the lower ones. But there will be times where you'll have to go back and do the lower ones. Like here, we need to unlock this one before we can unlock this one before we can unlock this one because the progression of the skill tree follows these black lines which goes down here. So before level 15 where we can unlock our extra Witcher Potion slot, we will need to have completed both of these previous skills. The order of priority once you get to level 10, obviously if you haven't finished these off I would still be doing these but you definitely should have by the time you get to level 10 because you've got 10 skill points by then and this only requires 10 skill points. So at level 10 in order of my priority I would be looking at this one first while casting signs time is slowed plus 15% per level. Now obviously there's a lot of different options but in general the red ones are what I would go with first so this one I find quite beneficial because it gives you more time to cast the sign or mess up casting the sign which you shouldn't be trying to do but it sort of slows down the battle it slows down the time so it gives you more time to do things then I'd be going for fast attack has a faster crit hit charging and there's only one skill point in that strong attack has faster crit hit charging than one skill in that so I'd probably do that one and that one because in general, in the lower monsters, while you're still fighting all the lower monsters, I didn't really start fighting one-star monsters until I got to about level 15 to level 20. At level 15, I was still requiring potions to kill them, and at level 20, I was not requiring potions so much to defeat the one-star monsters, or one-skull monsters, should I say. At level 10, we go for the time slowed when casting signs, Fast attack, strong attack, and parrying reduces incoming damage further. So 2% per level, we can level that one up five times. If you still got skill points available before you get to level 15, I would start looking at the orange ones, which are again to do with oil. So when you're fighting more difficult monsters, critical hits against oiled targets are add 2% per level, and we can get five levels of that. Obviously, again, as I said, you need to upgrade them to get further down the skill tree, although you don't with this one, and this one's got low priority, and this one's got low priority, so you might just leave these ones out completely. Throwing bombs takes less time. Now, as I've said multiple times, bombs are very useful. If you want to craft them, it can help you to defeat stronger monsters earlier, but I generally don't use bombs pretty much at all. So I've put these as low priority because, to me, I don't use them, so it's just a waste of the skill points for me. Critical hits against the oils targets is the next most important thing. Now, this is only because it is not something that we do all the time, whereas we always parry, we always use strong attacks, we always use fast attacks, we always cast signs. This one is situational. We don't use oils in every single fight. Unlocking the new potion is not important, so I would do this last before we move on to the next level. And throwing bombs is not important at all, I probably wouldn't do it. This one again, we need to do this before we move on to the next level of this, so I would leave it to last before we go for this spell here, which we'll get to in a minute. I would definitely level this up, but I would leave it until you need to level this one up. For level 15 onwards, we're looking at Witcher Potion slots. Now this is part of a larger strategy involving the Manticore armor which allows you to have a potion that's on all the time, which doubles the effectiveness of any other Witcher potions. So that is completely useless unless you have two potion slots, and this is the first point you get to unlock two potion slots. So if you've got that armor, this is the most essential thing that you open first. If not, we're looking probably for the casting of the Quen spell, which is my favorite spell because it means you don't always have to parry attacks. You can just keep hitting the monster throughout, and the Quen does the damage absorption for you. It reduces the damage. So I'd be looking at the Witcher Potion slot, the enabling casting of Quen, and then the critical hit damage plus 2% per level. So this is just, again, general for every fight. gives us more critical hit damage. The rest of them are situational, so I would do them when you're ready, based on your level of available skill points. Perfect parry reflects some damage back at the opponent. This is useful, but you're not always going to get perfect parry, so you're not always going to get 
extra damage, enables the creation of baits. Now this one I would have marked as high priority, except that with the current state of the Nemetons and the battles in the current update, I haven't really been baiting things. I've still been creating the baits because I think they're going to be very useful in the future, but at the moment the baits aren't that rewarding in game to use, so I've put that as medium priority for the moment. Extra Ard Kinetic Damage, this is something that you can leave till the very end if you are low on skill points, unless your preference is to use the Ard spell. Now, there are a lot of people who out there who go for the Ard, the use of the Ard spell a lot more than the use of the Quen spell. It's a different path to the one I use. Obviously, if you are doing that, then you'll want to put more points into this, and that's going to be high priority rather than low priority, at which point your casting of Quen would probably become low priority. Obviously, you'll be able to work that out if that's how you prefer to play. Uh, you'll have both spells unlocked by then, so you'll be able to choose which one you prefer to use. If you're following my skill tree build, I wouldn't put any points into this unless they are completely spare, because it, none of the things in the rest of the tree are dependent on that, so I would only put spare skill points in here. From level 20 onwards, for me, this one is the next most important one, because Quen reflects some damage back at the opponent. So you can absorb up to 70% damage, and you can reflect up to 30% of that damage back at the opponent. So I would max this one first, personally, because every time you cast your spell and they hit you, you're dealing damage back to them, as well as absorbing damage. Then I would probably go for this skill next. Successful parrying charges the critical hit meter, so anytime you're not casting Quen and you parry, you're getting extra charge on that meter without having to hit the monster. Then I'd go for slow time while performing critical hits. This has two levels and 5% per level. It gives you more time to perform the critical hit. For example, if the monster's sort of gearing up to hit you, you've got that little red indicator up the top, and you're about to make a critical hit, slowing time while performing critical hits will allow you to get that critical hit in before the monster hits you, which means his attack is reset and you've got extra time to parry that rather than just getting hit by it. Everything else on here I've marked as low priority, but obviously you'll need to unlock some of them to get further down the skill trees. So unlocks new potion Squall. Squall gives you extra damage when it's raining. Throwing bombs is even faster. Again, if you don't really use bombs, then I'd save the skill point from here for something else. So from level 25 onwards, we are looking at each successfully cast sign charges the critical hit meter, and perfect critical hit delays the opponent's attack by one second. This is probably the one that I would skill up first, and then the each successful cast sign charges the critical hit meter. The other ones are of medium and low priority because they are situational. After successful hit reflection, the next attack deals 5% damage per level. That's useful. Just like the perfect parry, you won't always get a perfect parry, so you won't always be doing the extra damage. This one's quite useful, but again, it's situational, so only when you're using oils. Reduces damage from oiled targets while parrying, so you can get up to 10% extra damage reduction when you parry, if you're currently using an oil. Which are potion slots plus one? Now, this could, if you want, be in the high priority, because it gives you an extra witcher potion slot, but personally, I found that by level 25, with the Manticore armor and two slots open, I was only ever using the second slot to put a potion in, and because that potion was twice as effective, I feel that I didn't really need the second potion slot. Now, that's not to say that I haven't used it, having unlocked it, but it's not very often at all, so I put it as medium priority. This one, I've got as low priority, I would probably save your skill points from here as well for some of the things further on in the tree, all bombs deal damage in addition to other effects, plus 2% per level. Now, that's quite a decent skill, but if we don't use bombs, there's no point in having it at all. So, going on to level 30, we want this one first, because this one pairs very well with our Quen strategy. So, damage from unparried hits reduced by 4% per level, and we get 5 of those. So that's 20% reduction from unparried hits. Now, every time Quen absorbs and reflects damage, you're not parrying. You literally cannot parry while Quen is active. It does no difference. So, this reduces our damage further, so that synergizes very well with our strategy. This one, gain critical hit meter charge when casting Quen, so it just accelerates your critical hit meter, so it means you can cast critical hits more often, deal more damage, uh, delay attacks faster, all those sorts of things. These two are, again, 
medium priority because they are spells that we don't use as often. The next most often spell that I use is probably Igni, and I use Ard the least often. However, in priority, I'd probably be looking at this one, then this one, then increasing the oil effectiveness, and add some critical hit meter charge when entering combat. Now, I'm a bit hot and cold on this one. I enabled it straight away because it sounds great and it's very useful, but if you're so used to the timing of three strong attacks and seven fast attacks before the first enemy will hit you, this messes with that timing. So you pretty much have to learn to play all over again because you've got more critical hit meter at the start. It means that on fast attack monsters, you can actually get in a critical hit if you're quick enough before the monster hits you. So it does mean that you can get a lot better efficiency at killing monsters, but it's completely relearning the timing and how you play. So it's up to you whether you do want that one. It can be beneficial, but it requires a lot of relearning in terms of timing and things like that. I found on strong monsters, you can still get your three strong attacks in before the monster hits you, but if you go for that fourth strong and then the critical hit, you will get hit by the monster before you get your critical hit off to reflect his attack. So we've gone for this one, this one, increasing the oil effectiveness because again it's situational but anytime you use it it's a good 10% increase so that's quite good. These two and this one depending on your preference for relearning the way you play. Now out of the last ones at unlocked at level 35, obviously I haven't got to level 35 yet but this is the one that I am going to be unlocking first when I get there. I'm probably going to leave these skills unskilled at the moment so that I've got more points available when I get to level 35 unless I've already got more than 15 points available when I get to level 35 then I'll probably start putting skill points into these just to fill them out because why not? So this one allows the chance to ignore cooldown after casting a sign which means if you cast uh, our Quen spell for defense and it immediately refreshes then you can get a hit of something like Igni or Ard out just to deal a bit of extra damage as well without having to wait for the cooldown. And then once that does go on cooldown, I mean if it keeps refreshing the cooldown, which I'm not sure whether that's possible because I haven't unlocked the spell yet, it might just give you a chance to refresh the cooldown once, but if it's really a chance to ignore the cooldown after casting a sign, it should be entirely possible that if you're lucky enough you'll just be able to cast sign and then it refreshes and then you cast the sign again and then you cast the sign again but you'd have to be very lucky because I can't imagine the chance of ignoring cooldown is very high for that but that's what I'm going to go for first. The other two out of these two I'd probably go for this one next as the chance to survive the final blow max one per fight. Now this sounds like a ridiculously OP skill but again I found that after level 25, there's not really many monsters that I come across that I can't defeat quite easily with the right combination of oils and potions. So this is useful, but by the time you get it, you don't need it. Chance to craft additional Witcher Potion. That's probably very helpful if you still use Witcher Potions a lot. I personally tend to find that I use oils more than anything in the current state of the game, but this is extremely beneficial. So if you are crafting a Witcher Potion and you're crafting a lot of them, every now and then it's going to give you twice as many of them. So just to recap, uh, obviously I'm focused on the red things first, and obviously if there's a red thing that you want to unlock, you might need to unlock a couple of the low priority or medium priority things before it just to get it, but it gives you an indication of where to spend your skill points when you've got them. So I'm going to make these two images that I've created, both this one and the plain one, available with links below the video. So feel free to use those as a reference to skill up your character. So hopefully my tips on skilling up your character help you to be a more effective witcher and a more efficient witcher and get a bit more enjoyment out of the game. I'm looking very much forward to WitcherCon coming up. I don't know exactly what it's going to entail yet. We've been given a few general hints, but hopefully you guys are excited about that as well. Let me know what you're looking forward to most or what you're hoping to see from WitcherCon, whether it's a release date for Witcher Monster Slayer because you're not yet playing the game or whether it's just some more details on the game because you're looking forward to playing it whether you think they're going to release it or announce it at WitcherCon, 
or whether you think they're not going to mention it at all. I definitely think it's going to be mentioned, just under what capacity and whether there's going to mention a release date or not is still unknown, but we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoy the content, feel free to give it a thumbs up, a like, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content from me. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.